Hello there, time for the harvest of the cocoons of the airy silkworm Samio Rizzini. As you can see in the playlist in the videos before, um, I kept it in this plastic box. It's nice time to see whether they have built the cocoons already and of course we can see already some here. That's one in the middle of these dried out leaves of Prunus Lauro Terrasus here. Yeah, this is not a big one, but it's nice and beautiful and shiny white. So because it's a, it's a famous silk in India and uh, in parts of Thailand also. And the cocoons can also be pretty big. Like here, hidden. Oh, this is a, a cocoon that was left um, by the caterpillar. Sometimes this happens because the caterpillar feels that it's not the right place, probably it's, if it, it felt that it's too dry here, so it goes out looking for another place, and sometimes you find uh, the caterpillars in the stage of pre pupa without the cocoon, and so then you know that one of the, the caterpillars that left a uh, partly built cocoon in the middle of the building process because it felt that it's too dry and this is of course here the problem that it is uh, of course too dry in here they love uh, high humidity and um, if they are young the caterpillars that's really crucial because then they die if it's not uh, has not enough uh, humidity but later on when they are in the last stages of the Caterpillars, they are not so sensible anymore to low humidity. Uh, but sometimes you can see also here, this is also our left cocoon. So we will find some of the caterpillars probably deep more down in the substrate. Sometimes you find them uh, built together in clumps like this one here. So this is also important that you don't leave them like this but that you take them one by one out because it can happen that uh, if they are building their cocoons in one place that one caterpillar can uh, close the exit door of the cocoon of the, of the other uh, caterpillar next to him and then the, the adult moths if they can't come out of the cocoon because it's uh, it's uh, blocked by silk threads of another cocoon so take them uh, one by one and as you can see later in the next uh, video you can mount them now uh, like this one by one so that if they come out they can, can climb and to to a uh, to the cocoon and if you find something like this this is a young uh, caterpillar probably pretty hungry i take him put him onto some new leaves here look they are so hungry they just start uh, to eat here immediately as soon as you present them some new leaves of prunus lauro terrasus yes they like of course humidity sometimes if you spray the leaves you can see them uh, drink the water by moving the head left and right and left and right they just suck up those little drops of water on the leaves uh, where they eat also here cocoon built sometimes you can also feel whether it's already a pupa in there or it's uh, or it's still a caterpillar if you feel something moving inside you know yes that's a pupa so, so we have already some of them here and of course now you can decide whether you want to go on with the breeding process waiting till the mosses come out of this, this cocoon or if you like to eat them you can now open the cocoons and take out the pupa uh, to eat it that's what a lot of uh, people do millions actually 
in uh, Asia because they depend also on the proteins of their uh, Thamiaricini caterpillars uh, that they don't they do not only use the silk but they also use the pupas and the pre pupa larvas uh, to eat them they are in fact very rich in proteins as you of course know and that's a good food source for people that you can grow also with plants that are not edible for humans like Prunus laurocerosus is a high in cyanide acid so this is a very dangerous uh, thing uh, for humans to eat a leaf of Prunus laurocerosus but not for them they are used to eat these kinds of plants that try to protect themselves with uh, cyanide acid in fact Thamia ritini is one of the insects specialized on eating uh, plant material that is protected with a poison like cyanide acid because it actually uh, originates uh, from the food plant ricinus. That's also why it's called Thamia ricini because of the ricinus fodder plant where it actually holds and then also in India. But of course we in Europe we don't have ricinus growing all year round so that's a nice thing that we can feed this animal with our Prunus laurocerosus an evergreen shrub often used uh, for garden fences around houses. Also in Europe it's a uh, it's, you can find it everywhere, it's even an invasive plant, people try to eradicate them uh, but this is not very uh, easy. But from now on it's not an invasive plant anymore because we can use it to feed some Oritini. So now it's a real crop uh, plant for production of silk and edible uh, insects. So if you go down here into the substrate, as you can see the Caterpillars mostly there on on the top of the top straight. So here they are very happy that they get some new food. You can see them move around and already start eating. But here we have some more cocoons. This is one that is a little bit brownish in color. There are also, of course, subspecies with like slightly different uh, colors of the silk thread, as we know also from. Bombyx mori, the mulberry silkworm, that uh, can be found in different color variations from light green to yellow, orange, and of course shiny white. You can find uh, every kind of a natural color, except for example blue. Uh, you can find a lot of colors in the cocoon silk threads of Bombyx mori, but not with uh, Thamia aricini motidale whitish, beige or sometimes they are a little brownish also like here. Look how many we have already, that's a really big amount and there's still many more here. So if you want to eat them you just open them and take out the pupa for eating. If you want to go on with the breeding and rearing process just uh, mount them singly to a branch like this and then you wait until they come out and mate and lay their eggs. That's a very simple thing. So this is probably one of the most simple, the simplest uh, silk moss to grow from your routine. It's also fun and it's also a very very beautiful moss if you Look at the picture here that you can see in other videos. So I think that in around two weeks we will be ready to see the first adults emerging from these cocoons. And of course we have to go through some more uh, of the boxes. And here in the in the back you can probably see a document uh, box, or as you probably also know from the other videos. Um, I tried to rear them in this document box and now I want to have a look as soon as I'm finished here with the cleaning uh, of the cocoons. Now we go to this document box 
to see whether we also find some cocoons there. This is, look, this is a brownish one, and here is a white and a white one, pretty big one also. So of course this is not, not enough to uh, make the shirt, especially not for me in the XL form. So it needs a lot of these cocoons to make a piece of clothing, and of course it's um, a lot of work to uh, spin the silk thread of this species because you cannot reel them off like um, from the mulberry silk one. You really have to spin it like cotton. Also here, look, this is also another a brownish one. Interesting. Sometimes they have a little bit more color than other than other cocoons. So that's it. Now this one is just bring it out in the garden on the compost and now let's have a look what we can see here look this is the box uh, also here the material feed for the plant is dried out completely that's of course not good for the little caterpillars I place them on fresh leaves small ones so they can grow uh, also here but we see some cocoons here is one here is one so we have a lot of them already but of course here in the box they have um, also the possibility to to crawl somewhere else to build a cocoon and what I can see from a look inside there they have uh, of course done this some are on the bottom here of the box here's another one here's another one you have to, yeah. we have to remove it from the paper where it's glued at so, Oh, that's another caterpillar here. So now let's have a look Oops, into this box here. Let's have a fresh feather for the plant here. So you can see that here's one. Here's one. In the edge of this cage, of this aerarium, you find a lot of them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are a lot of them now here on the top. They like to place them on the net of this of this cage here. Yeah, also here in the edge is one, and there's another one here. Well, we find a lot of these uh, cocoons. Here's another one, and there are some caterpillars that fell down the, from the fodder plant. So of course you can rescue them and put them into the cage with the new and fresh leaves here but of course if they are already too long uh, on the bottom of the box they have died mostly so let's see here what we find just, yeah, we take them away put them on the new fodder plant and they are very happy there. <laughs> they are eating. Another one here. So actually if you want to grow your own edible insect, this is one of the easiest to grow species because you don't have to care for the fodder plant. Uh, because it's growing everywhere and your neighbor is very happy if you cut his scarf fence of uh, Bruno's Laur or Terrasen's bed, of course you have to ask him. Some people they think you want to steal something very uh, from them if you cut the, the fence, but um, or like with Huckleberry Finn, they think as soon as you want something from them, they want also something from you. And 
and they want some money from you when you uh, uh, want to cut the defense of Brunus Lauro Cerasus. But of course, this makes no sense because Brunus Lauro Cerasus is growing abundantly everywhere and it's even an invasive plant. A lot of people want to get rid of, of this plant in Europe. And they pay a lot of money to eradicate this, uh, these plants, but not with big success because the plant is, is very, very uh, active and it's, it's very hard to, to extinct them here. If, if they grow in a forest, they are specialized to grow in the winter time when the light is coming through the branches of the other bigger trees. And so exactly at this moment now, in the winter time or early spring, uh, they grow very, very good because the light is coming through the, through the branches that have, uh, haven't yet the leaves here in Europe. That's the best grow phase for Brunus Lauro uh, And during the summertime, of course, they cannot grow that big because most of the light is caught by the leaves of the bigger trees in the forest. Look here, some, um, some other cocoons everywhere you go, you will find some, or also some of the caterpillars, like here. Transfer them just to some new leaves and see whether they can survive there. Sometimes they can, even though you think they are probably dried out. But this is a very, very vital organism. Look here, what they are doing. Let's put them in, they are just eating here, nibbling on this new fresh leaf. I have a lot of them. And this will go on for these smaller caterpillars for another one or two weeks and then they are also in the cocoon. See what happens next if you subscribe to the channel. Sky Food is our name for edible insect because it's really food from the sky because insects have been the first animals on planet Earth that could fly 100 million years before the first dinosaurs could also do that. So that's why we call edible insect Sky Food. There's also a conference at the Zurich University every year. Go to www.skyfood.ch for Switzerland and you will have all information there. Thanks for watching.